This shape is primeval, part of the landscape. And just as a caveman got the jitters when he saw the outline of a saber-toothed tiger, I'm pre-programmed to start shaking when I see this. So which member of the 9-11 species is prowling around our track? This is the GT3, a Porsche that offers you less, so it can give you so much more. It's been stripped of all creature comfort, so there's no sat-nav, there's no air conditioning, less soundproofing, even the carpets are thinner. No fancy leather seats in the front, and no seats at all in the back. And it's all in the name of saving weight. It makes no apologies for what it is. So if you want a comfy ride, get another car. If you want to be cool on a hot day, get another car. If you want height adjustment on the seats, which I don't, get another car. But what they've left behind is good stuff. For instance, look at the brakes. The calipers are yellow, not the usual Porsche red, and they signify something important. The discs are ceramic. Sounds like pottery, but it means they can cope with enormous punishment without overheating and fading. And then there's the engine. Oh, yes, the engine. It's hand-built from exotic materials like titanium, and it's probably the most important part of the car, which is good because it costs 40 grand. Shame, then, that you can't really see it. It's in here somewhere, behind this old washing machine. And it staggers me when I think where it is, still hanging out over the edge at the back. Now, technically, that's just wrong. It's like building a pyramid with the pointy bit at the bottom. It was a daft idea when they first did it 40 years ago, and on paper, it still is today. That should be rubbish. It should be up to the usual old 911 tricks. All that weight at the back, swinging round like a big pendulum, ready to punish you the first time you run out of straight road. And talent. So you'd think that over the years they'd try and inch the engine forwards. Now, sir, look at our lovely new headlamps. Meanwhile, the engine's coming towards the front, but no. German engineers don't do U-turns, so it's still out there at the back. Wherever it is, though, what an engine. And the figures speak for themselves. 0 to 60, four and a half seconds. Top speed, 190. And for once, it's not scary using all that power. In the bad old days, to try and counter the handling problems, Porsche tried crude heat Robinson measures. They stuffed the front bumper with lead to try and balance it. But none of it worked. In the 70s and 80s, the 911 was the Grim Reaper's company car. Huge crowds would gather at roundabouts to watch fat stockbrokers climb trees in their Porsches. Nowadays, though, they're a little more scientific. They've mastered the suspension and honed and polished their car until they're left with this magnificent creation. <laughs> This is an amazing machine. You can put it where you want it and then hold it in huge slides. Don't worry, I'm not the drift gun. Look, I'm going sideways. Look at that! at the wrong end, yeah. So what? Sure, it's a flaw, but it's a flaw like Cindy Crawford's mole, J-Lo's enormous buttocks. It's become its defining feature. It's the whole point of the car. The GT3 is final and absolute proof that evolution works. And after 40 years, this isn't just good, 
This is the best 9-11 ever. <laughs> That's it, that has made up my mind, I'm convinced. I'm going to go straight home tonight, rip the back seats and all the carpets out of my old 911 and turn it into a mini one of these. It's fantastic. Mm, that won't work. You'll just end up with an upturned bathtub with no seats in it. You are however, a good However, yes. I've driven this this year, and you know I'm a bit of a Ferrari man. Footballer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was the best car I've driven all year, GT3. I never thought I'd say that of a 911. I can't I believe you are, but... I adored it. I'm glad to hear you say it. It is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. But, of course, there is just one test left for it, the stick. Now, before we sent him off to HMS Invincible, which we'll see in a short while, as a bit of practice, because it is bucketing out there, we sent him out on the track in this. So, schnell, schnell, Herr Stigmacher. And he's off. Now, the track surface was soaking. Look at that spray. So, this is going to be very lively out there. Be careful, Stig. Steady. And we made our love on oh the Sting sucking up to Martin Kemp, I think that's shameless. Now we go round Chicago, and look, he really is, he really is having to work to keep the GT3 in check here. Gonna be going into the hammerhead. Now this could be the biggest test so far. You can actually see the front end lifting under the power. This is not a day for a rear engine car at all. Definitely not a day for a rear engine car out there. That is so difficult in the wet. Blasting out of the follow through, and he's gonna lose it. Hang on there, Stiggy. Look at that. Not even breaking into a sweat. The last two bends now. Is he gonna keep it off the grass? Tidy, tidy through Gambon at the end, and across the line, in. Now, this is important. Wet track, the fastest wet lap we've ever had so far is a 911 Turbo, which, of course, has four-wheel drive. This doesn't, and it did his end. I cannot believe this. In the wet, one minute, 27.2. That's just... It's, look at that! That's faster than an Evo 8 in the dry! That's a, that, that, if that had been dry, I'd, I don't even think what it would have done it in. No. That's, that's got to be... Anyway, the after that momentous drive, yeah. he went off and he joined the Navy.